If you could change history, would you? I don't mean going back to the Middle Ages or something like that. No, I mean if you could work on an electronic design today and you knew your work would help usher in a new world of technology, would you? I know you would. So would I. So, how are we going to change history today? With some single-pair Ethernet. That's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Single pair Ethernet is primed to change the trajectory of industrial automation, process automation, and even intelligent transportation. And you can help. Today, my guest is Lindsay Walling from Phoenix Contact, and we're digging into the details of single pair Ethernet how it works, how you can use it, and how it's going to change the future of industrial Ethernet. Let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about single-pair Ethernet solutions from Phoenix Contact. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, so we're talking about single-pair Ethernet today. But before we dig into the details, Lindsay, what exactly is single-pair Ethernet? Yes, that's a great place to start. Single-pair Ethernet is a two-wire industrialized Ethernet solution which is available in IP20 and IP67 formats for direct connectivity to automation field devices. Lindsay, what kind of applications are you seeing single-pair Ethernet being adopted into these days? That's a very good point. This is definitely a product that is being adopted into uh, systems. It is very, very early in the process and is actually in developmental stages for many of the componentry that will be needed. But in the future, we're anticipating a great deal of applications in factory automation, process automation, building automation, and also intelligent transportation systems. This actually also includes onboard vehicle. But in most cases for single-payer Ethernet, from this perspective, we're primarily talking about factory automation. Keep in mind, over the next several years, this product is expected to expand to be close to 250 million ports of installation per year. So this is anticipated to be a huge trend in the marketplace going forward. Wow, it certainly is. Now, Lindsay, what kind of challenges are we looking at really solving here? What's the current state of industrial Industrial Ethernet. Well, with the current state of industrial Ethernet and the big advantage of single pair Ethernet is when we get down to, as we talked about a minute ago, the field bus level. So we look at typically field bus networks and the need to communicate back up to the Ethernet system. And with field bus networks such as IO-Link, Profibus, DeviceNet, Conbus, or also many proprietary protocols out on the market. These bus systems require a gateway to basically interpret from those device level protocols up to Ethernet, and that adds complexity and expense to the system. Okay, so Lindsay, if we use single pair Ethernet going forward to address these issues, what kind of infrastructure are we looking at? Well, as we go forward with a single-pair Ethernet system, it eliminates the need for the gateways, and it eliminates the need for that communication interpretation, if you will, from the field device level up to Ethernet. So we will now be communicating completely on an Ethernet system. So this increases the capabilities of smart devices to communicate, increases the efficiency of the system, otherwise fewer downtime instances, and if there are downtime instances, they will be reduced in duration, partially due to the fact that you're no longer having to, if you will, reboot gateways and other equipment. Also, there's going to be a greater capability of real-time manufacturing data up to the cloud with increased analytic capabilities. Also, we will be looking at it further, but there'll be increased capabilities for higher data rate speeds and also greater cabling distances will be incorporated. Okay, cool. Now, what kind of standards are we talking about here? Here, Lindsay? 
there are many different standards that evolve around the Ethernet systems and IEEE standards. The two standards most related to the single-pair Ethernet are the IEEE 802.3BU for power over data line and then also the IEEE 802.3CG for 10 megabits of single twisted pair Ethernet. Okay, so can we take a little deeper look into a couple of those standards you mentioned? What about that power over data line standard? What's the difference between that and power over Ethernet? Yeah, sure. That's a great place to start. The IEEE 802.3BU power over data line is extremely important for the single pair Ethernet, and it provides some uh, very distinct advantages over power over Ethernet. First of all, power over Ethernet requires at least two pairs or four wires of cabling, whereas the PODL, yes, it is pronounced poodle, only requires a single pair, which is two wires. This reduces cable size requirements such as the size, the weight, cost, other capabilities that is an advantage over the typical POE application. Also, this uh, reduces the need for marshalling of power or additional power lines within the system. Also, in many cases, certain pieces of equipment, especially in building automation applications, they may have battery backups or operate off of batteries, and this will eliminate the need for batteries within the system. That may not seem like that big of a deal, but if you also think about in the future, after an installation of equipment and maybe a year or two years down the road, they need to go out and change batteries. So it eliminates the need of maintenance going out and changing batteries within the systems. And the power over data line is capable of up to 50 watts for short reach and 7.7 .7 watts for a long reach applications up to 1,000 meters. Okay, cool. Now, Lindsay, I would imagine that that short reach part of this solution would really come handy in a lot of places. There's definitely some real advantages with the single pair Ethernet and capabilities with the T1S for the short reach. First of all, if you look at a legacy type system presently, you would have wiring directly from each sensor in the field or monitoring device that would then go back to a field bus and then out to the gateway. So each individual sensor has to have, if you will, a home run cable. With the single pair Ethernet, it's capable of doing drops up to eight nodes. And these nodes can be, if you will, daisy chain cabled from node to node with distances up to 25 meters. We also, with single pair Ethernet, have the capability of bi-directional communication, which is uh, certainly an advantage. This will definitely decrease the amount of cabling and connection requirements that there is within the system. And again, we have the capability of power over data line up to 50 watts. Okay, so Lindsay, what if I need a longer reach? What does that solution look like? If you look at the longer reach, the T1L and that capability, if you think of a traditional Ethernet system now, the cable runs are limited to 100 meters in distance. With the single pair Ethernet capability at 10 megabits type data rate, we now have the capability of running cabling up to one kilometer, so 1,000 meters. So as you can see, that's a tenfold increase in distance capability from standard Ethernet. This also increases or decreases the amount of cabling requirement, much fewer pairs of cables, and also not only can we run trunk lines up to a thousand meters, we can then have spurs from off of the field switch up to 200 meters without additional repeaters in the system. Great. Now, what are we looking at in terms of data rates, especially with the 802.3? Right. If you take a look at Ethernet systems, in the past we typically would often talk about 1 gigabit type data rates, 10 gigabits, and that's really up more at the control level of the system. But when you're talking about the field device level, you know, sensors and monitoring equipment, the sweet spot is really for industrial systems 
about 10 megabits type of data rates, both for the T1S short and the T1L that we just talked about. Now, you might think again that these seem like low data rate levels, and you might think that that doesn't sound very impressive. But if you compare it to existing systems using other protocols such as DeviceNet, and again, comparing to DeviceNet, it operates typically at 500 kilobits up to 100 meters or 125 kilobits at 500 meters. So you can see, again, we have practically a 20 times increase in data rate capabilities at the field device level and also cabling distance increases of double when you compare 500 meter maximum of device net. So you can see here that there is a tremendous advantage and will increase the data rates at this level within an Ethernet system tremendously. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Now, Lindsay, what does the future of single pair Ethernet look like? What areas should we be paying attention to moving forward? There are several different things that we investigated, if you will, talking with customers and within the market for a wish list of capabilities for the connection technology. Those are miniaturization, industrial reliability, simplicity, and also capabilities of growing with future needs, otherwise being future-proof. So, Lindsay, let's tackle that first one on your list, miniaturization. What are we really looking at here? Well, the single-pair Ethernet, because of course the fact that we are talking about two wires versus either a traditional Ethernet system of either four wires or eight wires, we're able to reduce the size of the interconnection system tremendously. First of all, there are several different standards out there for single pair ethernet, but for the industrial versions, there's basically in an IP20 system, there's basically the 63171-2 from the IEC standard and 63171-6. The 63171-2 is the standard that we are looking at uh, most specifically here, and it has the capability of being 38% smaller compared to the IEC 63171. If you also take a look at it compared to the uh, traditional RJ45 product, it is approximately 50% the size from the standpoint of the printed circuit board real estate. Uh, so you can see here, if you look at a four port RJ45, it takes up about 60 millimeters of board space compared to the single pair Ethernet four ports at 28 millimeters of printed circuit board space. So this provides the capability of increasing the amount of outputs or ports on a device and also allows for uh, smaller space requirements on that device, making it possible to make your devices smaller and smaller. If you go and now take a look at the IP67 capabilities from a standpoint of integration, we're utilizing an M8 connector style, much smaller in size than a typical RJ45 or in other cases where people are using M12 connectors, so about 30% size savings compared to a typical M12. You can see here we're going to have several different capabilities of products from uh, the standpoint of pins and sockets, capabilities of doing wire-to-wire -wire applications, and uh, several other capabilities of growth with this product. One other important factor for the M8 connector style is that it is a true M8, and many sensors are designed on an M8 format. Therefore, it'll be much easier for integration of the single pair Ethernet system into existing M8 sensor shell styles. In other cases, the single pair Ethernet products are not on M8 style connection sizes, they are larger and therefore would require complete new designs of sensors, which of course is going to increase costs of the overall system. Also with the M8, we're gonna have the capability of either front mounting or rear mounting on the device or on the uh, wall. And that is an advantage for designers of devices as to how they can more easily integrate this into their systems. 
Okay. So speaking of integration, I would imagine network design flexibility would also need to come into play here as well. Is that correct? Absolutely. We actually have a video here that we can run. It shows the integration of both IP20 and IP67 products. And one of the key points is, is capabilities of doing wire to wire, both in the IP20 as well as IP67 products. Another key feature is, is that there is the capability of plugging the IP20 products into IP67 applications or the connectors, which will allow easy capability of testing in the field with the same cable, both for, again, IP20 or IP67 applications. Now, Lindsay, it goes without saying that reliability will play a huge role in industrial communications going forward. What does this look like with a single pair Ethernet solution? Absolutely. If it doesn't stand up to the stresses of an industrial environment, uh, it's obviously not going to be a good solution for the market. So we have done uh, many tests to ensure the uh, mechanical reliability and electrical reliability of the system. Some of those tests include flexion tests, lateral force, otherwise basically pulling on the cable from different angles to the connector to the mated system. Also, direct pull-out force of the uh, locking mechanism greater than 50 newtons. We have tested up to 750 mating cycles according to the IEC 60512-9-1, which is a typical uh, number of mating cycles also for RJ45 type connectors. One other test that we've done is uh, for vibration safety, shock tests, vibration tests. Again, we've done same vibration tests as the standards used for RJ45s. And we're also looking at uh, special testing for uh, the rail industry as well. Also testing for electromagnetic capability. So we've met with compliance of MICE-1 with 600 megahertz of uh, capability. We have done additional burst tests according to IEC 61000-6-2. We also provide optimal shield based on the fact that we have four grounding legs to the printed circuit board for the device connectors. And also when you take a look at the industrial environment, these products are suitable for pollution degree two. We've tested for over voltage and also have ensured there is no susceptibility due to uh, the TCL property or transverse conversion loss. Also, we've tested these products for an optimal 100 ohm system design. Okay, so Lindsay, another aspect you mentioned was simplicity. What does that mean in terms of a single pair Ethernet solution here? Well, there are several different aspects for simplicity. One of the things is that we will have capability of connectors that can be terminated in the field with simple IDC, insulation displacement technology. You know, it has uh, color coding matched in and also robust housing with a metal latch for AWG sizes 26 to 22. And again, this is on the IP20 side of the product system. Another aspect of the simplicity is the compatibility of the IP20 and the IP67 product. And also, as I mentioned before, the capability of the IP20 connector to be intermated with an IP67 that can be used for servicing or even programming updates of equipment. We're also able to use uh, identical parts, contacts, and the contact carrier interface, which increases the economies of scale and provides uh, pricing advantages within this system. Okay, cool. Now, Lindsay, the last thing on your wish list was future-proofing. How exactly are we going to future-proof our designs in this situation? Yes, there are several different things that we're doing to assure future-proof design so that this single-pair Ethernet system will grow as the market changes. First of all, we, along with several other companies, formed a single-pair Ethernet system alliance. This group of companies has come together to develop the technology and competence of single-pair Ethernet. 
and they cover all different aspects of the single pair Ethernet ecosystem, such as connectors, cabling, chipsets or the FIs, testing equipment, switches, and other equipment uh, needed again to complete a full single pair Ethernet ecosystem. With this group of companies, uh, there will certainly be future capabilities developed in according to the needs of the market. One other key aspect is the uh, standardization as we move forward. And as you can see, there are several different standards that could come into play with single pair ethernet. And the system that we have developed is designed to be able to meet all of these capabilities and being able to move forward in the future. Again, from 10 megabit, where we're primarily looking at today, up to one gigabit type of data rates are capable. Also, we've done simulations indicating a bandwidth capability up to 2.5 gigahertz. And it's also ready for IEEE 802 dot three ch another area looking forward is the capabilities of expanding as we mentioned before we're starting off with m8 design for single pair ethernet but we're also looking at integrating single pair ethernet into m12 connector systems in some cases we'll do a single pair within M12, as there are some customers, some companies that would prefer to have a M12 design, which is very popular on the market and also considered to be a bit more robust than a common M8 connector. We also have capabilities of expanding up to four ports, if you will, or four single pair ethernet into an M12 connector system, which will again increase the capabilities for density within a system and then splitting out to four individual single pair ethernet. So Lindsay, what does Phoenix Contact offer in this space? Yes, for the initial introduction of product, we'll be starting out with the IP206371-2 in cable assemblies and also the printed circuit board device connector, as well as very shortly, the field installed connector. And then when we take a look at the IP67 M8 solution with IEC 63171-5, we will initially come out with completed cable assemblies or patch cables with either pins or sockets on each end and then also device connectors in a vertical mount. Okay, so Lindsay, where should my audience go for more information? Well, there's a lot of information out on the web, so I certainly you know, suggest going out and looking at uh, single-pair Ethernet from off of the web, but also within Phoenix Contact, we have two primary locations that I suggest. Uh, we have a landing page that has a lot of videos and training tutorials available on the subject, and that is phoenixcontact.com slash SPE or then also taking a look at SPE System Alliance that we talked about, which is simply www.singlepairethernet.com and then slash en to bring up the English page of the website. Fantastic. Well, Lindsay, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, and this is certainly the time that everybody has the opportunity to help shape the future of Ethernet. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about single-pair Ethernet solutions from Phoenix Contact. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.